What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review? Today we're looking at the Glen Morangy Signet. Stick around. Okay, so this is one that I never say correctly. I was saying sign it for years. Apparently that's wrong. It's Signet. So I kind of have to burn that into my brain. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there already know about this one. This is a very popular, very premium release from Glen Morangy. It's a whiskey that's been around since 2008 and it's pretty unique stuff. Uh, you know, usually when we'll talk about production processes, we'll talk about what casks matured the whiskey. Um, is it peated or not? I don't know, worm tubs, whatever. But this one is all about the barley. We have two different types of malted barley here. One is the single estate Cadwell barley and the other much more famous ingredient is the chocolate malted barley. Now, uh, chocolate malted barley, interesting stuff. It's basically roasted malted barley and it tends to bring out flavors like coffee and unsurprisingly chocolate. Uh, it's a technique that's often used to make craft beer. And for one week every year, Glen Morangy shuts down production for all of its other whiskeys and it distills the chocolate barley or the chocolate malt needed for our signet here. Uh, apparently this whiskey is twice distilled and then it's going to be matured in a combination of virgin American oak barrels and sherry barrels. This is a no age stated whiskey so we don't actually know how old it is but I have heard rumors that there's some older stuff, some substantially older stuff mixed in here. Uh, I've heard stuff as old as like 35 or 40 years old might be in here. Um, I don't know how much or to what degree but still I mean we're uh we're in fancy boy territory. Reaction to this whiskey has been largely positive. I think most people either like it or love it um, but the biggest point of contention with this one is always the price. It's gonna be the most premium offering from Glenmorangie's core range. Um, you can see we don't have our standard Glenmorangie presentation here um, but hey if you're going for luxury might as well look the part right? And you know, fancy bottle aside, this is just one that I've been looking forward to trying for a really long time. Um, I haven't had a lot of stuff that's made with like chocolate malted barley, but the few I've tried have been really good. And beyond that, I'm just, I'm a big fan of Glen Morangy's house style. They have a very gentle, very delicate distillate and you know, there's lots of like vanillas and marmalades in there. I'm a big fan. And throw on top of that the fact that we've got an Oloroso sherry cask finish here. Uh, you guys know me, I love my sherry, so this one should suit me just fine. Now, I should mention this bottle was gifted to me by one of my Patreon supporters, uh, a guy named Alan. So, Alan Shishini. Um, yeah, why don't we see if this one lives up to the hype? Why don't we jump into our review, see what our whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, so we have a nice healthy ABV of 46% here. Um, our whiskey is to be non chill filtered. Unfortunately, we do have E150A or caramel colorant in this. Um, and you know, I. It's not excusable, but I can shrug it off when uh, our whiskey is like entry level or more affordable or blends. That's fine, but for a premium whiskey like this, really should be natural through and through. Look at that. Um, <laughs> over the top for some maybe. I guess I'm a bit of a peacock. I love this bottle. I think it's one of my favorite in my collection. Uh, I love the black to transparent gradient. I love the design on the front. There's no labels here, so everything's like embossed in gold straight onto the bottle. We have a box that's just as ornate. Um, in terms of information, it's pretty bare bones. There's not a lot here, but who needs information when you look this good? Um, flashy, flashy, easy five out of five for presentation for me. This has not been watered. Let's check our nose. Wow, okay. Uh, right away, you can tell this is different. Um, the vanillas, uh, the chocolates, the fruits, they all pop out at once. Uh, we definitely get both bourbon and sherry influence here. I'm getting caramel, coffee, um, leather, some earth, some biscuits. There's wet oak, there's fruits. Um, our fruits are going to be like red apple skin, uh, oranges, some apricots in here, some dark red berries. Um, listen, this is really deep, it's complex, it's nuanced. Let's try our palette. Okay. Okay. Um, extremely like creamy and malty and full. Um, not surprisingly, we're getting a lot of those like roasted coffee and like chocolate notes in here. Um, 
caramel, uh, dates, tobacco, leather, uh, chocolate orange, grapefruit, cinnamon, um, even a little bit of whipped cream. And now our finish. Yeah, okay. Uh, still very rounded, very creamy. Um, roasted nuts. There's some mocha in here. Um, peanut butter cups. Uh, some buttermilk. Uh, just regular butter. There's bitter dark chocolate in here. Uh, there's sherry. Uh, there's more of that caramel, uh, that cinnamon, more dates. Uh, our finish is medium in length. Honestly, that chocolate malt really does work some magic in here. Uh, this one takes me to like a coffee shop, uh, sipping on a mocha maybe. Um, I think the most striking thing about this whiskey is just how full and rounded and rich it is. Uh, it's one of those luxury whiskeys that actually tastes the part. This tastes luxurious. Part of that's the nuance we get from the flavors. Uh, part of that's just that buttery texture. It's like really creamy and like velvety. So I do get the sense when I'm drinking this that I'm drinking something special. And the chocolate and coffee flavors from our chocolate malt are on full display here, which means we do have some like bitter counterbalances to the sweetness in here. Uh, it's a really well balanced whiskey. It's, it's delicious. Now I'm not trying to detect any of that like super old 35 year old whiskey in here. I'm sure it's there, but um, still this is a whiskey with like zero youth to it there's no rough edges it's a well-aged whiskey but the fact that it doesn't really have any rough edges means it's not going to suit everyone and i can appreciate that because sometimes people want those whiskeys with more challenging elements to them it makes them feel like they're drinking something that isn't easy access that isn't catered to the masses and i think this one is a pretty easy access whiskey i think anyone can drink this stuff but that doesn't really bother me personally because while i do like a whiskey with a bit of an edge to it it's not like necessary for my enjoyment. Uh, this whiskey, I think a beginner could sip it, enjoy it, and get a lot out of it. I'm not sure they'd get all the nuance. I'm not sure they could like appreciate it fully, but they wouldn't have any trouble with it. It's not going to put them off. So it's a very accessible whiskey. It's modern and yeah, it's actually a little bit engineered, but I think it works wonderfully. I think all the elements come together nicely and it goes beyond just good flavors and good texture. There is nuance, there's subtlety here. So while it is like modern and slick, it's still a little bit understated in some ways. So my score here is gonna be 91. It's a gorgeous whiskey, and again, it tastes luxurious. It really feels like I'm tasting something from the more premium end of the spectrum, and I don't think it disappoints on the promise of something special. It is special. That being said, again, this whiskey is not going to be for everyone. If you're one of those people that seeks out those more challenging, rugged, or exciting elements in whiskey, this one probably won't be your cup of tea. It's probably a little bit too pretty for you. This stuff is about as far away from an Ardbeg or a Springbank as you're gonna get, but obviously I love it. But then again, I got off easy. Uh, this was a gift from a friend. And if you're considering picking this up on your own dime, of course, the big question here is, is it worth the money? And that'll take us to value. So is this worth the money? Yes, I think it is. I think it's a great splurge. I think it's a great treat yourself kind of whiskey, something you buy once in a while. Obviously different people have different tastes. Not everyone will be on board, but if my description sounds interesting to you, I would suggest you check it out. Um, there's nothing edgy here, but if you're into something that's a little bit more rich and nuanced and buttery and textured, this one should do the trick. Personally, I love this stuff. It's my favorite core range Glenmorangie, but you know, at that price, it kind of better be. Uh, you know, in a perfect world, you'd be able to sample this stuff before you buy it. That's not always an option. Um, still, as far as I'm concerned, it's a damn fine whiskey and one I'm happy to recommend. All right, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe, greatly appreciated. Also, if you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. And I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Glenmorangie Signet here? Was it worth the money? What were your thoughts? Finally, down in the comments below, let me know what you want to see me review next. I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.